Hello everyone, my name's Heather and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be showing you guys what's in my Taekwondo training bag. So the bag that I take with me to all of my training sessions, although actually I haven't been taking this bag with me recently because we haven't been using most of the equipment because of uh, coronavirus. But anyway, I'm going to talk to you guys about what's in here. So let's start off with um, what I think is like the most important thing and obviously that has got to be your bottle of water. It is so important to stay hydrated, especially when you're training. Um, I honestly probably go through about two of these per training session. That's like two liters of water per training session. So, um, you know, it's always really important to have this. So that's number one item that's in my bag. Uh, the next thing that is in my bag is these. So these are just, they're not specifically made for Taekwondo, but um, it's kind of become a trend in the Taekwondo community to wear these kind of um, shoes. I wear these shoes um, when we're training in uh, a couple of our training centres. So we have different places where we train. Um, in our main training centre, we have mats like the mats I have on the floor here. But um, in some of our other training centres, we don't have mats because they're like school halls, so it's like wooden floors. So we wear these shoes when we're training on the wooden floors, you know, to like protect our feet. So these are quite well worn, as you can see, they are starting to fall apart. So I will be getting a new pair of these soon. Um, but that is the second item that's in my bag are these Taekwondo shoes. The next thing that is in my bag is also footwear. So these are foot protectors. When we are training in our main training center uh, where there's mats, we usually train barefoot. But when we are doing kicking targets, well not everybody does this, but I personally, whenever we are doing kicking targets um, at training, I like to wear these foot protectors so that I can like um, protect my feet, but while also, you know, going full out with my kicks. So, you know, putting as much power as possible into my kicks. These ones actually are not ones I would normally wear in training. These ones are competition ones. Um, so they have like electric sensors in the, toe pads that connect with the electric um, body armour. So I was actually gifted these for Christmas last year because I was supposed to do a competition in March but obviously that got cancelled because of the lockdown. So I haven't actually worn these ones. Um, I think I've worn them once, you know, just to try them out at a training session but I've never actually worn them properly. Um, I don't actually know where my, <laughs> where my current actual um, foot protectors are but I will insert like a picture here of what they look like and those are the ones that I you know wear in every training session so not everybody wears them for kicking targets but I like to because I find that they're you know they're comfortable and they protect my feet. This is a kicking target so everybody has their own small kicking target like this uh, we all bring it to training and this is what we use when we're training with each other to do middle kicks, roundhouse kicks, chop kicks, uh, anything like that. So this is an essential item. Now moving on to the things that we haven't actually been using recently um, because obviously we aren't allowed to do any sparring. So I'm going to talk to you guys about my sparring gear. So first of all, we have, if I can get them out of the bag, we have these. These ones are for your legs. So if you're kicking or you're, you know, if when you're sparring, if you're kicking someone and you accidentally, you know, like, uh, because, you know, like when you're sparring, you're not necessarily going to hit the mark every single time. Um, you could miss and then basically just to protect your shins um, from any like major damage. So um, that is what the leg protectors are for. Next, we have the same sort of thing, but these ones go on your lower arm here to block any kicks so um, you know if someone gets hard they're not going to obviously like break your arm so those are the arm protectors uh, you can also get um, arm protectors that cover the elbow as well my particular ones aren't like that because actually uh, in competition you're not allowed to have ones that cover the elbow you can also 
get um, thicker versions of these, more like practice ones, where you can get lower arm bits, upper arm bits, and you can get different leg bits as well, like thicker leg um, ones. Um, there are also, we have gloves, but again, I'm not sure where they are. I will again insert a picture here of what the gloves look like. And again, you know, like the gloves are to protect your knuckles and, um, you know, like the backs of your hands if someone kicks you while you're sparring. Actually, in Taekwondo, for those of you who don't know, when you're sparring, you are actually allowed to punch. Um, most people tend not to, but it can be an easy one point in a, in a sparring match if you can find the right place to punch. It's not of, often that it happens, but you know, the gloves are there to protect you for when it does. This is the groin protector. We wear this underneath our uniform in competitions, but over the top of our uniform uh, in training session, and obviously that is to protect, you know, everything down there, because if you get kicked there, it's gonna hurt. I can tell you that from experience. It has happened to me multiple times. Next thing, and um, this is one of my favorite parts, is the headgear. <laughs> Mine's a bit squashed because it's been in my bag. So this headgear, it's just made of foam. It's nothing too fancy, but it really is a lifesaver. So I have, as you can see, a plastic visor on my headgear. This is not like uh, something that's compulsory. We don't currently wear these visors in competition. This is something I wear in training to protect myself and you know most other people in my uh, you know class also wear this because there's no point in causing any unnecessary damage to ourselves while we're training when we're just trying to learn you know how to do moves and things like that and if I were to ever go to competition I wouldn't even wear this headgear because they will give you a headgear with uh, sensors in it um, that you know if that connects to these foot protectors so if someone kicks you in the head like they get a headshot it the sensors in the headgear and the sensors in the foot protectors are calibrated and they will measure that encounter as a point so it's called electronic sparring so that's what they use in most competitions nowadays there are a few other things that I don't actually have in my bag right now um, which I'm going to talk about in a second so this is the body protector so this obviously goes around the body here and this bit goes over the head and there's string that ties around at the back to keep it all secure, if you can see that. So obviously the body protector has a red side and a blue side, that's for, you know, convenience. Uh, I mean, so if you're sparring with someone, you know who's red and you know who's blue, that is the body protector. It's again made of like a solid, quite solid material and it's, to be honest, this isn't actually soft compared to like the headgear or, you know, like these foamy leg protectors. This is actually a lot more solid. Um, there is some padding in it, but, you know, this is designed really to keep everything, like your whole chest area, um, your ribs and everything really safe. This is so important as well as the headgear. Those are probably the two most important pieces of this, you know, um, all of this gear. So. Make sure you've got your body protector and your headgear and your groin guard and you're pretty much set. So now I'm going to talk about the few things that aren't actually in my bag. Well actually there's one more thing in my bag. Guys, I always carry spray. Um, I'm not going to show you what brand it is but I always always carry spray because after the training sessions I often take the train home and I just don't want to smell disgusting to all of the people on the train because otherwise I feel bad for them. The few things that aren't really in here that I want to talk to you guys about. So first of all, I have these. These are ankle weights. They attach to your ankle like this. And basically what I use these for is stretching. Um, you know, these are, I think they're like two kilogram weights. I do not carry them in my bag, obviously, because they make my bag really heavy because they're like dead weight. But yeah, so I carry, I use these at home when I'm stretching at home, um, you know, to give myself some extra push or um, when I'm kicking as well, uh, to give myself some extra resistance to help build up strength in my legs. So that, that's those. I also often um, have some deep heat cream in my bag uh, because occasionally like you can have some aches and pains from stretching and you know 
you just want to like soothe that a little bit so I'll put some DP cream on before we continue anything else in the training session but other than that it's that's it really that's all that's in my bag so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I know I talked a lot um, so next week uh, I will be doing some proper instructional videos but I just thought you guys would like to know what's in my um, training bag my taekwondo bag and the most important things for me when I'm training. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this and I will see you again next week. Thank you for watching.